Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kayla and I release new videos every Monday about all things BPD and mental health. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification up top. Now, as you guessed from the intro and from the title of this video, we're going to be talking about cannabis in relation to mental health. I will also touch on BPD specifically because there has been so much research with the more recent legalization of cannabis, it's been interesting to see the progression of how this drug is viewed in society, the stigma that's surrounding it, and actual scientific research that shows us the impact on not only physical, but mental health. Now, before diving into those questions about whether or not it's good or bad for mental health, let's talk about what marijuana is in the first place. Marijuana, which is also referred to as cannabis and has a bunch of different street names too that you may be familiar with, essentially derives from the cannabis sativa plant. And within this plant, there are hundreds of different chemicals known as cannabinoids. Now, the two main ones that you may know, we have THC and CBD. THC is really the compound or chemical that gives you these mind-altering effects. Um, and CBD doesn't have those same properties. And so the two chemicals interact in our body in a very, very, very different way. Now, the cannabinoids that we see in cannabis plants are actually neurotransmitters that we make in our own bodies independent of the plant. And this is called the endocannabinoid system or ECS for short and ease of reference. What's actually interesting about this is that we see the development of the endocannabinoid system as early as when there's a fetus in the womb. And so this is something that we develop from the very early stages of our lives and is a part of our system. The point of this system also is to kind of buffer and slow down neurons within our body. As I had mentioned, we see these two main compounds in cannabis, so CBD and THC. CBD is really associated with the positive therapeutic benefits that we often hear about, things like pain management, seizure control, and others. Well, THC is associated to the mind altering properties and is often associated with the longer negative impacts. It's also important to know that while we do have these two main compounds found within cannabis, there's also a variation of strands and types. The two main ones would be indica and sativa. And the main difference is that sativa is really associated with this mind high, this elevation in energy, sometimes in mood, focus. While we see with the indica, it's more of this body, whole body high that is associated with being more mellow, being more relaxed. Easy way to remember this is indica is referred to often as in the couch, meaning that you're really chill, you're really mellow. Well, sativa is more of this high energy. And so within this, right, we have the two main compounds, THC, CBD, we have strands, indica, sativa, and there's also different combinations. You can have a different, a certain strand of marijuana or cannabis that has a 50-50 split between the two. You can have three quarters of one, one quarter of the other. And so the variations, the effects that you will experience will be very different depending on the strand, depending on the time of day, depending on a whole plethora of factors that go into the actual consumption of cannabis. As we know, the ingestion of cannabis has various side effects and impacts in the way that it interacts with our whole body. When looking at the brain specifically in the different regions, we see, for example, that the interaction between the amygdala and cannabis usually has an effect on anxiety and paranoia. We may see someone who ingests cannabis, whether that's smoking it, doing through a tincture, doing edibles, whatever the form may be, but they're ingesting cannabis. Oftentimes we see this with THC, that there's an increase in anxiety. People may become overly paranoid. So that's with the amygdala specifically. If we look at the hippocampus, there's impacts in short-term memory. The hypothalamus, we get the munchies. And so we start to get this whole brain picture of what the actual impacts are with cannabis, how our body reacts with it. Now, the million dollar question is, can cannabis create long-lasting psychiatric disorders? The problem with cannabis is that oftentimes people see this as a natural drug. 
right? They, they think to themselves and they justify it to others and to themselves saying, well, we have receptors where we have neurotransmitters that we're born with, the endocannabinoid system, as I had mentioned before. And so we have this system in place and we have this plant that has cannabinoids in it those two things should go together, right? Why else would we have the system if we're not made to ingest marijuana? If it is bad for us, why would we have mechanisms in place that go hand in hand with this? The fact that it's a plant, the fact that it's been treated or used for medicinal purposes, for sleep, for anxiety, for pain management, increased appetite, right, with uh, cancer patients, there's a whole narrative around marijuana. People often also say, well, it's not as bad as alcohol. That's not a justification. And it's actually still very bad for our system when you actually understand what it does internally, not just short term, but in the long run too. So that was just an a side note, but coming back to this question of whether or not this impacts or can create long lasting psychiatric disorders. With THC, specifically if we take this it it's weird because it creates it can a state of paranoia and anxiety but simultaneously you might feel euphoric you might have the munchies but be slowed down in your thinking and processing speed so it's almost like you have this chain reaction of side effects that kind of go against each other which can create this overwhelming feeling at times of almost being in psychosis in a psychotic phase that you lose the essence of yourself you're paranoid you're anxious you're elated you're down at the same time right it can be a weird conjuncture of different side effects obviously i'm very mindful that it's not everyone who experiences this it's not everyone who feels the whole plethora of things at the same time it's just that what we have seen with research and there are specific mental disorders that can be worsened or triggered by marijuana. If we think about someone who is bipolar, for example, and who already experiences mania, and then is then ingesting a very high concentration of THC, which can also increase this feeling of being euphoric, you could see how this might tip them over to fall into another phase of mania. However, when we think about BPD specifically, Marijuana cannabis use cannot cause BPD, okay? This is a personality disorder. This is something that you're born with um, and it's about your personality. What I will say though, is that it can worsen symptoms. It can amplify it. People often think cannabis is good for my anxiety. What they don't realize though, is that when they're ingesting cannabis, whether THC or CBD, but oftentimes it's, it's, it's THC, right? Realistically, because people also like the body or the mind high that is associated with it. It might temporarily, or so they believe, relieve their anxiety. And so they fall into this pattern of feeling as though they need it. I need to smoke before bed so I can sleep. I need to do this so that I can do X. And it becomes a crutch. It can really become a dependency in our lives but again, because people think, well, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as alcohol. It's a plant. It's natural. We have a system inside of us made for cannabinoids. All of these justifications make it so that cannabis has become more socially acceptable for dealing with anxiety, for dealing with maybe symptoms of BPD. So it's just important to kind of have a more wholesome perspective on the actual impacts short term, but also long term on your mental well being. Because we also know that there's an overlap between substance use disorder and BPD. I think it's somewhere close from anywhere from 80 to 90% of people who have SUD also suffer from a certain personality disorder. Marijuana can easily fall in that category. It might not have the same addictive properties as heroin, for example, or crack cocaine, but this. Nonetheless, it doesn't mean that you cannot be dependent, right? You cannot become addicted to this thing because you're using it as a tool, as a coping mechanism to avoid feelings of emptiness. And it's almost like sometimes when people do feel empty with BPD, that at least they think to themselves, well, when I'm consciously, when I'm choosing to smoke or ingest cannabis, THC specifically, 
I'm choosing to numb things out on purpose. And so it can become this weird thing that they're using it as a tool for gaining control. They're using it as a tool to escape feelings. They're using it as a tool to avoid, to numb, to decrease anxiety. What often happens though is that as soon as you're not high, the anxiety comes back tenfold because you've been ignoring it, ignoring it. And so I'm just trying to make all of you realize that there's also a dark side to cannabis that's maybe not that talked about. Now I will say that there obviously are positive attributions to cannabis use. We're not going to deny those. There's been multiple studies, right? Especially with CBD use for pain management, um, THC also for cancer patients who while going through chemotherapy are having a really hard time with nausea, being sick, and so this helps to soothe the system to actually allow them to eat. And so there are positives and some of you might have differentiating opinions. So of course, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always learning. I'm in this process of discovering more about cannabis as a whole, not only for myself, but for clients, right? As a therapist, it's important for me to know these things but most importantly, I'm curious to know firsthand from my own community, from all of you, to know what has your experience been with cannabis? Have you found that it's been useful? Has it amplified or worsened symptoms? Has it helped you in what way? Let me know down below. Well, the purpose of this video was just to give you a brief overview about cannabis use, the impacts it has, and whether or not it has the potential to cause long-term psychiatric disorders. I would encourage all of you to check out Dr. Andrew Huberman's podcast. It's called the Huberman Lab Podcast. He recently released a podcast episode that's about an hour and a half to two hours that talks about cannabis use in relation to mental illness. It's really, really informative. Um, he's really good at synthesizing complex processes and systems within the body. He's a real master at that. And so if you're curious to know more, to dive deep into the science behind what the processes are internally when we do ingest cannabis, I would really recommend to check out that podcast. I'll just link it in the show notes down below for those of you who did want to check it out. On that note, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me today. I wish you all an amazing week and I will see you next time for another episode of On The Line.